Good morning. It's Kelly DeMarco here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to this virtual space um, where I speak about all things related to cancer and climate change and um, really exploring what it means to thrive in a time of personal and planetary crisis. Um, this is kind of a reflection space, a contemplation space, uh, just a virtual dialogue space um, to make connections uh, around topics that I feel are near and dear to my heart um, and near and dear to a lot of things taking place on our planet right now. Um, my husband was diagnosed with cancer in June, and it's now December, and his diagnosis was a pivotal moment for our family, for our relationship, um, not in a bad way, um, but cancer has definitely been a crisis for us. Um, it's also been a tremendous opportunity for healing, connection, rediscovery. Um, and it's really having me reflect a lot on the value of crisis moments to um, catalyze us, to catapult us into something new and different. Um, I think crisis moments are powerful alarm clocks. And I think we have an option to kind of hunker down and react and get mad and turn inward and implode and do all of those things. But I think there's also this other tremendous calling, which is to look at it as an alarm clock and see what it is that we need to be waking up to. What are we being called out of our sleep to? Um, and I've done a lot of this reflection recently around climate change because um, Tim and I were coming out of a really intensive time when we left um, of an order and a life that we had really devoted our lives to and it was a huge shift for our family um, and it really drove me inward to contemplate all kinds of things but in doing so I took to writing and I ended up finding a woman who helped me with purposeful memoir writing um, and she helped me, um, I felt drawn to her because her background was all about kind of connecting the dots with the environment. And I knew that I felt a deep call to be of service to what's happening on our planet, but I didn't know what to do or how. I didn't know what was mine to do, but I felt like connecting the dots was a good place to start. And um, she anchored me at the beginning of my life, kind of in the womb. And I realized that I came in to the planet, came into my this life in 1970, at the beginning of the start of the Environmental Protection Agency and the beginning of, you know, the first Earth Day celebration, which uh, Wisconsin, um, I think Indiana, but I for sure Wisconsin had a huge part to play in that. Um, Gaylord Nelson and I know there are many others involved, but I find found that really interesting to know that like this is where I live now. <laughs> um, so That anchoring has been so important. It's been like a, a huge um, 
fuel to kind of go back to the beginning. Um, I think my real wake up call to what's happening on our planet happened in 1991. I was standing in line at a grocery store in Brussels, Belgium, and I read the headlines of a newspaper. The International Herald Tribune were standing in the checkout line and it was talking about global warming and kind of what our planet would look like and what was ahead for us if climate change was thing that they were, you know, at the time it was just global warming. But if this weren't brought in check, it would be pretty devastating. And a lot of what we're seeing right now on our planet um, it is what was talked about in that newspaper article. And as I went back through my own life to kind of connect the dots and to look at it in the context of like being a member of this global society and system, I, um, cause I really needed to know my place. Like who am I and what am I doing here? And what does this all, what does my life mean? Does it mean anything really? Like, and, um, that alarm clock was profound for me and tracing back through time and looking at like when that alarm clock went off, when I was standing in the grocery store line and I was reading that article, like I literally felt something shift in my heart and in my being. I felt like those words just came in through my eyeballs and went down inside of me and just landed. And this desire to act, this desire to do something that would change or alter the course for us as a species. Um, I was dedicating my life to health. And I knew that for people to thrive, our planet has to thrive. There's just no other way. So, you know, that really was the beginning of a long and windy path that led to picking up trash, counting trash in the basement of a newspaper agency a week of collected trash and that really was my portal into seeing like the problem of trash and our huge footprint um, and it just expanded from there I ended up going on a bike ride in Argentina to raise awareness for the problem of trash and that just opened up my sight to like the bigger problem of trash all across the planet and that's just choking the lives and livelihoods of people who absolutely depend on a thriving environment right in their own backyard for them to sustain life. And I returned from that journey back to the United States and got involved with local um, environmental work and realized that, holy shit, <laughs> These people, there's a lot of anger and a lot of, I'm right, this is the right way. No, this is the right way. You're wrong, that's wrong, that's not gonna work. You know, in the activism movement, that was in the early night, oh, what's that? No, that was like in the late, I don't know, almost 2000. <laughs> um, and I was just like, holy shit this is feels like a crisis already and it feels like I have to learn how to live in my own skin and these people I'm trying to do things alongside of like it's kind of a mess um and I really appreciate people who stayed in that mess to kind of work through it I personally felt called to a more contemplative lifestyle and joined an order and 
pursued the path of mysticism and priesthood and really that journey was about finding peace finding a way to like be here on the planet in my own body and stay um and not like you know commit suicide or do something horrible because I was so uncomfortable in my own skin um and I learned so much traveling that journey um, about what it really means to thrive as a human being, what it means for me to thrive. Um, and eventually, like, circumstances changed. My husband and I, uh, we, uh, our marriage was kind of founded in that whole life, and our daughters were born. And we decided at a certain point, we went on a vacation and reconnected with my family and with our love for the outdoors on a trip to the Pacific Northwest. And here we had two small girls and I was like, oh my God, I, I love it. Like I love, love, love being outside. And I want my girls to know this experience. I want them to connect to the earth, to the beauty, to what it feels like in their bodies to be immersed in this, um, these beautiful outdoor spaces. And I just found myself being called to something different. And so that was a hard time. That was a really hard time of change. Um, it felt like a crisis because our whole world was like, Everything about it was changing. The people we hung out with, our daily routines, how we woke up, how we went to bed, who we ate with, like all of it changed. Um, hard, yes. Good, also. <laughs> and It led us down this path of a rediscovery of outdoor spaces and eventually into farming, growing our own food, and eventually buying a farm of our own and returning to our roots in the Midwest because we both felt kind of this need to return to where we came from in this life, to return to the kind of earth, the topography, the geography that felt like home. As much as like every, every other place I've been to has been amazing, but there was something about this need to return to this physical home. For a time, I don't know for how long, but it's been so grounding and anchoring and it's given birth to a service of our planet in this whole new way which has led to regenerative agriculture regenerative land management just for me exploring what regeneration means what does it mean to be a generative force on this planet what does it mean to be a creator what does it mean to contribute in a life giving life promoting life sustaining way because as human beings, we've been takers. We have taken and taken and taken so much. And it hurts. It hurts to know that. To know that I'm a part of that. And coming into this Christmas season, it hurts to be present to those. That part of me that's part of this like life taking force on this planet and giving being a creator being a co-creator giving back that is a journey it is a journey out of um away from so much that's become the, the culture the society that we live in and So 
So <laughs> here I am now just walking in the snow because it's gorgeous and it makes me happy. <laughs> and when I'm walking outside and my feet are on the ground, it can be grass, it can be mud, it can be snow. That feels like enough. It just feels like I'm enough. My connection to the earth is enough. Um, just enough. And there's no want for anything else. Um, and it just feels good to like feel what that feels like to not want for anything, to feel whole and filled and connected to and sustained. Um, so on this beautiful morning, um, I just want to invite you to like go back to your own connection, your own roots, your own um, beginnings, your own crisis moments. Like connect the dots because those dots matter. Um, they help make sense of where you are right now and have huge information for you about, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. I, I, I'm just felt compelled to share a bit of my own path and I think I'm going to stop there. Have a wonderful day. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Enjoy the weather, whatever it looks like where you are. Um, I'm super delighted to have snow where I am. <laughs>